I'm Chris Schultz. Welcome to Talk About Topeka and welcome to 2013. Has everyone retrained themselves to write the new year on their checks? I'm just kidding. If you're still using checks, you probably don't care what year it is. All right, we have a great show tonight. I'll sit down with Pat Park and Nick Baumgartner, owner of the Kansas Coyotes indoor football team. Their win-loss record is like the opposite of the Kansas City Chiefs, so there's some local pride here. We'll also be joined by Melanie Klein, owner of The Linen Tree. It's a cute little store in Brookwood Shopping Center, where a friend of the show, Connie Cook, recently moved her business, Marion Lane Candles. So I'll talk with Melanie about how Connie is doing and why she never returns my calls, and so on. Okay, tonight's show is brought to you by the WIBW channels and the Break Room Downtown's best spot for hot breakfast and lunch. Find out more at breakroomdowntown.com. This show is also supported by viewers like you. So cough up the dough, brother. For those of you who are avid fans of the show, you'll probably have figured out by now that we decided to take a couple of weeks off for the holidays. Well, we're back, and we hope that the season treated you and your families well this year. I'm sure that many of you made some fantastic New Year's resolutions, and we are no different. This year, we simply decided to keep doing what we've been doing. It has truly been a pleasure keeping you updated on interesting people, events, and facts about our great city. Since this is the first episode we've recorded in the new year, and there have been so many big events that have happened around Topeka since then, we've decided to highlight one in the interest of potentially giving some ideas to folks who might still be searching for a resolution of their own. It's never too late. And with headlines like these, it seems like more of us could simply resolve to help others see the light. Who would have thought that Kansas and Topeka would have already made the national spotlight this year? What was the huge accomplishment that deserves such amazing accolades from the national spotlight? Human sperm. Yep, a and lesbians. Could it be one of Hollywood's biggest new blockbusters set on the Kansas prairie? Or a tacky adult film shot in a fine Kansas Motel 6? Nope. It's just another stain on the sheets, uh, pardon the pun, of our state's reputation perpetuated by an out-of-control government trying to convince itself that it has nothing better to do than knock on the bedroom door of honest, tax-paying Americans. I'm not going to update you on this story because if you haven't heard about it by now, well, you're probably not watching this show. When will we all be able to stand up strongly together and tell these people to stop tearing others apart because they don't understand them? Using faith to disguise their fear and to justify their hateful behavior towards others. The idea of using hatred to fight love makes no sense to me as a human being or to any of the Christian religions I've ever taken the time to study. If you happen to be a leader in the great state of Kansas, please hear this plea. I challenge you to make a political resolution for 2013. Stop picking on the little kids to further your own agenda. Start making decisions that are in the best interest of all the constituents you serve. It never paid off for the bullies in the school playground, and it's not going to pay off for the bullies in the government. We all want to have faith in your ability to lead our state, if we can see that you're willing to earn it from us. Getting elected isn't enough. You have to look out for more than just the slight majority of people who voted for you. You have been selected by the people to make decisions for us. Please have pride in that and strive to be an example of intellect and integrity for our youth. Some people have resolved to cut the pounds in 2013, and that can be quite a chore. But here's something a lot easier to do than starting a strict gym regimen. And it will benefit so many people when you commit to doing it. Instead of just pledging to cut the pounds, start off by cutting the BS. I have faith that you can do it. And not the hateful kind of fear faith, but the kind of faith that I believe would make God smile. Wouldn't we all just be a little bit happier? Shouldn't that be our collective goal? If that idea goes over your head, then at least you have a whole new season of Honey Boo Boo to look forward to on cable. Well, 
football anyone? I, my two guests here in the studio with us, Nick Baumgartner and Pat Park. We are uh, with the owners of the Kansas Coyotes football team. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing great. Thanks for having us. Right, you guys have been there for 11 years, right? The team's been around for 11 years. This is our first year running the show. Our Absolutely. first year as owners. But, yep, this is the 11th season. 11, 11 years at the Expo Centers where you guys are playing. Uh, how, how do you become owners of a football team? That's a, it's, a, it's a wild process. It would take too long to explain how you go through that. <laughs> it just kind of happened, yeah. and there we were. That's cool. That's cool. And what drew you guys to it, to Topeka here? I've been, both of us have been here for 10 or 12 years or so, and I've been working with the previous owner of the team for the last couple of years in another business. And uh, saw the opportunity, and I made him what I thought was a ridiculous offer one afternoon, and I was the only one laughing when I finished. And he said, if you write that down, I'll probably take it. And a couple more years went by, and I made the offer again, and he said, okay. And I called Pat and said, I think I just bought a football team. I'm going to need some help. I guess that's a good way to get started <laughs> in it, huh? <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, how, how things are going at the Expo Center with you guys. Well, it's going fantastic. We've got a good partner in the Expo Center. They've been fantastic with us. Uh, we're going to see some new things this year. F fans that have been out there before may recall that the end zones didn't have the Kansas Coyotes logo on it. Mm -hmm. And that will change this year. So that, that's a Excellent. change we're making. And, and we'll also see a lot of changes in the actual uh, show that you see there at the game. Yeah, very good, very good. Well, and you see a lot of great things happening at the Expo Center with, I mean, we just saw Cirque du Soleil come in there. You, you guys have got, uh, you know, not only you guys are over there, but you've got the hockey team over there. Lots of great things are happening at the Expo Center. Uh, and so what do you guys uh, feel to bring to the Expo Center uh, how, with as far as attendance-wise? You know, how are things going with that? A lot of people is what we plan to bring there. That's a uh, good goal. You know, we've... Uh... The attendance for the Coyotes over the last couple of years has really declined, and we have taken an entirely different approach to that. About the first thing we did when we got the team was to cut ticket prices way back, some case 30, 40 percent or less or, or more than that. Uh, we we're selling sections to sponsors, but sections to sponsors, not just a row here or a couple of seats there, but we've had several sponsors who have stepped up to get us off to a good start this season, our first year by buying entire sections, 130, 150, 200 seats wow. uh, that they get to take care of. And then we still have the Every Kid or Every Child Ahead program that uh, sponsors can buy, purchase tickets that will go out to specific youth groups or schools for them to use and bring people to the game. So we really expect that, uh, well, the first game, our first game on March 16th, the Faith and Family Night, we expect that that game's probably going to be close to a sellout, wow. uh, at least the way we see it right now. Very and good. then from there on, uh, at least the lower section filled, having need to open up the upper section at the Expo Center. Be the first time in a long time that a uh, sports team has brought that many people to the Expo Center on very a consistent good. basis. Very, very good. And I also want to talk a little bit about the players. Uh, how, how do people get oh. to be players on uh, the Kansas Coyotes? <laughs> well, through a combination of ways. We, what we see are, are players. And, you know, there are a lot of players that, that go through college football and for one reason or another, most don't make it to the NFL uh, on the first try. Sure. And so we have a lot of players who maybe weren't in a position yet, they still needed to work on their game, or they had an injury or what have you at the time that the draft was going on. So sure. they, they need to play somewhere, they need to develop their statistics, and they need game film wow. to send into the NFL scouts. Sure. And so we provide them an opportunity, you know, a platform to work on their game and hopefully to get seen by some people so they can move up. Wow. And we, you know, once we announced some of the changes with the ownership and league changes and things like that, the phones lit up. We've got people calling from all over the country. Uh, we're bringing back roughly 10 of the players that we had last year who are outstanding players. And then we're recruiting to fill all the positions. In January, uh, we'll be holding open tryouts to fill the last few spots that we'll have open. Oh, wow. Very good. So what you will see this year, a lot higher level of play than you've ever seen in indoor football at the Expo Center. Excellent. Excellent. It's, it's tremendous. And our roster is filling up, which you'll see on our website pretty soon. That's very exciting stuff. And, and let's talk a little bit about the league that you guys are in. Uh, you know, who are you guys playing? 
We're in the Champions Professional Football League. Okay. Uh, excuse me, the Champions Professional Indoor Football League. And our terror competition is the Wichita Wild, mm -hmm. uh, the Salina Bombers, us, the Mid-Missouri Outlaws, which are out of Salina, uh, Kansas City. Uh, Kansas City Renegades, which used to be uh, in the Arena Football League. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, you've got an Omaha team, the Omaha Beef. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Lincoln Haymakers, Lincoln Haymakers. Oh, wow. and the Bloomington Edge. You got Oklahoma. quite a quite a and, league, and Oak, the, uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma Defenders. City. Yep. Wow, wow. And uh, and how do you guys uh, suspect who's who's ranking what uh, you know in the league? Well, we're going to win every game we play by a large <laughs> That's margin. What we hear. Uh, they might as well not even come to town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's that's a good question. This year, the level of competition is really consistent and really deep on every team. There's a there's going to be some really good shootouts. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in days past, high scoring 60, 60, 60 something to 60 something games were pretty common. Defenses, I don't think are going to allow that in this league. You're going to see a much tighter game and uh, and probably a lot. Well, there's, there'll be plenty of scoring. They won't be nearly as lopsided as they have been in the past. Sure, sure. And, and we think we have plenty of team to, to hang in there with that. I, that's exciting. We're all going to keep our eyes on the team this year. And uh, we're very excited that you guys have come to, uh, come to the rescue of the team and you're doing such wonderful things with it. Uh, how do folks find out more about uh, Coyote football? Go to kansascoyotes.com. That, okay. would, that would be one great way can also go to the Kansas Coyotes Facebook page. Okay. And, of course, remember, as you can probably see on your screen, that's Coyotes with a K. Okay. Yes. Uh, so the Facebook page has a lot of information. You can also go to the CPIFL Facebook page, which is the league page. Okay. Uh, and also CPIFL.org has a lot more information about the rosters of the other teams that are in the league. So you can learn about all of them, too, the different teams that we'll be playing against. Very good, very good. And you're always, everybody's always welcome to stop by the office. We're on the back side of the Ramada Inn at 501 Southeast Jefferson Street. And come by any time. We love talking football. Very good, very good. Well, Nick, Pat, thank you so much for coming on to talk about Topeka today. I uh, hope you had a great time, and we hope that all you guys are going to get out and have a great time seeing some football at the Expo Center with the Coyotes. Thank you so much, guys. Thank Thanks you. Again. Well, today on Talk About Topeka, I am with Melanie Klein. She is the owner of the Linen Tree in Brookwood Shopping Center. Melanie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, before the show, you know, I, I, I've known the Linen Tree's been around for a long time. I didn't know exactly how long. It's been 35 years. 35 years. Wow. Tell yeah. us a little bit about uh, a little bit about what you guys do. Well, the Linen Tree is basically bath and kitchen shop. We have linens and accessories for bath and kitchen. But over the years, I've expanded a lot. I go into a lot into the toiletries and home fragrance and just a nice mix of linens and things to use in your bath and kitchen as well. So, Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. And 35 be, years. Yes, 35 years. That's a long time. And so, so how long have you actually owned the store? I've owned the store since well, about actually 28 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's a long right. time. <laughs> and is. how are you? I mean, you're only 25 years old, I, so I know. how did that how happen? That ha no. I don't know how that happens, but I guess I was just, you know, a teenager when, <laughs> when I started working there. <laughs> and what, what, what made you say, I would like to own my own store? Well, I, it didn't really happen that way. I mm -hmm. guess I moved to town, my husband and I, in 1977, and we moved in a little apartment right behind Brookwood. We had a young family. I graduated from college and in interior design, mm -hmm. and I knew I wanted to do something related to to that. And I walked in the linen tree the day after it opened, and <laughs> there in Brookwood, and and I recognized a former K State friend. Um, and she and her sister-in-law were right out of college, and they decided they were going to open the linen tree, and they went to market and um, did what they needed to do to, to get the business started. They just thought there was a need there in Topeka, and, 
and I said, hey, I'm looking for a job, you know. <laughs> I, you know, I only wanted to work part-time, so I started working two days a week back in wow. 1977, and it evolved you know, from there. 35 years later, you've yeah. owned a store. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the original owners is still in Topeka, Pam Becker, mm -hmm. um, and she she's an interior designer as well, but she she really wanted to focus on the designing end of it and felt like that's the way she wanted to go. So that she came to me and said, you know, you really ought to think about buying the store from me. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of that, you know. That's a great story. 30 years later, you know. And that's what you do, right? That's right. Wow, yeah. wow. And so you're, in, you're over in Brookwood Shopping Center. I am. And uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the, the feel of the little neighborhood over there. You guys have got a great organization over in Brookwood. Uh, we and do. And I know our, our friend Connie Cook at Marion mm -hmm. Lane, she's over there in Brookwood. Yes, but she's a new, a new merchant. Yeah, yes. tell us a little bit about the, the, uh, the whole network, neighborhood feel in Brookwood. Well, it is. It's a great neighborhood feel. Um, Brookwood, you know, right there in, on 29th Street is is very neighborhood feeling you're right it's always been focused on um, independent retailers and mm -hmm. small business and um, I, over the years there's just always been a changing but very good mix of of clients and and shops there so i just have always loved brookwood and really you know don't want to be any place else or i guess i would have been <laughs> 35 years later I wouldn't be in the same place but but yeah it's just a great mix of tenants right now too um, you know you lose some here and there and and uh, it's kind of the nature you, you of the beast of, yeah, yeah it's yeah. true you know all around town businesses do come and go but I feel very fortunate to be around as long as I have. So about Brookwood, uh, is there an address or web website for Brookwood that kind of talks about the people that are, uh, that are over there? Yeah, if you're interested in knowing who or what's going on in Brookwood, you can go to the Brookwood website. It's Shop Topeka, I'm sorry, shopbrookwood.com. Shopbrookwood.com, Shop right? Brookwood. And you guys have a page on there as well with the We do. Tree. We have our own page and there's... Um, the events that are going on, you can see there. You can also go to a coupon page, and I always have at least one coupon on there, so you can check that out and excellent. Bring excellent. it in the shop and tell me you saw me on Talk About Topeka. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Do you have a lot of uh, return customers? I mean, a lot, a lot of, of return customers. Yeah, yeah, I, I really, I'm, I'm very hands-on, so I am in the store at least five days a week. We're open seven days a week. And, and I, I know most of my customers. I can't call them all by name, but I do try, you know, and I just, I think we have a, you know, a lot of great people in, in Topeka. And I think so many of them are appreciative of, of some of the small businesses that we do have here. Um, and try to support us as best they can. So I think that's something that mutual, people really want to do. They yeah, want to support they local. They want to, and yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, if I didn't love what I do, I probably wouldn't still be doing it. But well, and, and let's let's talk about some of the products that you guys sell. Okay. Uh, what are what are some of our top sellers? Well, one of the biggest lines that I carry is Crabtree and Evelyn. It's a real well known um, line of toiletries and and home fragrance mm -hmm. and. We're one of the few places, you know, that in town that you can get it, and we do carry an extensive part of the line. Sure. So that's that's a big business for us. But there's, um, we carry quality bath linens, um, Casa Tex, and you know, lines that people would, you know, recognize the names of. Sure, sure. Um, and I always try, I try really hard to find... Um, quality products um, but try to sell them at the most reasonable price I can but yeah. I, I do feel value is really important to some people you can go buy you know linens that are a lot less expensive mm -hmm. a number of places in town mm -hmm. but you're not going to get the quality and the value that that I try and those are the kinds of lines I look for yeah yeah um, so people you know depending whatever price range you know they're looking they feel like they've got a good value for what they've spent. Sure, perhaps one of the biggest yeah. draws is you can go into the store 
and you can actually see Melanie right there. That's right. <laughs> and, and you know exactly, you know, who you're supporting and you know, uh, you know, you just don't know that. You don't get that personal touch with yeah. a lot of the big box stores. You don't, you don't see that. No, so. you really don't. And it's businesses, businesses like that that we have to keep going here in Topeka. Well, obviously I think so. I, well, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> So next yeah. time you're thinking about yeah. uh, the home gadgets or linens, you should definitely get to the linen tree. Melanie, thank you so much for joining us. I really you're appreciate that. You're very welcome. That. Thank yeah. you for having me. You bet. And I, you know, I can't let you leave until we do the notorious lightning round. That's where I put uh, 60 seconds on the clock, and I ask you a bunch of silly questions, and we see uh, what comes out of your mouth, basically. Oh. Go right. Well, that should be interesting. <laughs> There's no right or wrong <laughs> answers, so don't worry about this. All right. Okay. Uh, let's put 60 seconds on the clock, and go. Uh, paper, rock, or scissors? Scissors. Oh, you won. I had paper. Oh, no. <laughs> see? Paper. Let's see. Uh, what's your favorite color? Blue. 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 All right. Uh, if you were an animal, which kind of animal would you be? I'd be a cat. All right. And mm -hmm. why? Um, because they're soft and cuddly. <laughs> uh, let's see. Our next um, question. What would you have for lunch today? Yogurt. Good lunch. Good lunch. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could bring a dead celebrity back to life and ask them one question, who would it be and what would you ask? Oh my gosh, you might have stumped me on that one. It's a big one. No, oh, golly. Question. Um, it will probably, maybe I would bring back Elvis. And um, what would I ask him? Um, <laughs> that's even a better question. <laughs> Why did he wear that crazy white outfit? I will accept that answer, okay. absolutely. Right. Uh, and uh, we're out of time, but <laughs> one more question. What's your favorite television show to watch every Tuesday night at 9.30 on my TV? Talk about Topeka. Hey, Melanie, thank you so much. You are very welcome. Get out to the Linen Tree in Brookwood Shopping Center and see Melanie. She'll get you all taken care of. Thank you. Thanks again to Pat Park, Nick Baumgartner, and Melanie Klein. This episode is sponsored by the WIBW channels and The Break Room, downtown's best spot for breakfast and lunch. Find out more at breakroomdowntown.com. If you have something to say about Topeka, then tell us on our website or through Facebook, Twitter, or Gmail. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Now, if you, want to, if you want to do a whole tab of smiley thing for a half an hour, we can probably squeeze some more in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, could, we can give you Charlie a whole outtake we'll reel. Charlie Rose. <laughs> Check out their new menu at breakroomdowntown.com. Sit around because, oh man, I've screwed it up. I, I didn't want to make it the same as last time, so. Well, we're sitting around. So. Yeah. It's Labor Day weekend. Once again, it's time to visit Lake Shawnee for the Labor Day Festival softball. Softball. Demonstration, dancing, and arts and crafts. All right, I'll just throw pictures up for that. I haven't eaten anything all day, so I'm about to die up here. Right. So, yeah. Thanks again to Barry Feeker. This episode was sponsored by the WIBW channels. WIBW channels. If you're going to do that, commit to it. I am going to.